Thanks for staying with us. We are looking at the race in the first congressional district right now. It's a seat that's been held by Congressman John Larson for the last 22 years. He is up against Republican Mary Fay, who joins us now. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Jen. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. So you're a West Hartford town councilor. Tell us about mm -hmm. yourself. Why do you want to run and why do you want the seat? Yeah, absolutely. So I've always had a very strong interest in politics and um, I was president of my class for a couple of years and always been a leader in business. Uh, ended up being a senior vice president at GE Capital in my 30s, but my career really took priority over getting involved in government. Not to say that I wasn't involved. I, I did uh, join Save Our Water when Niagara Bottling came to town and uh, fought for some open space of my hometown of East Hartford. But I didn't have the opportunity to run because I was traveling all the time. I was away from home most of the time. so. So I found myself in a situation where I could run, and I entered the arena as a Republican, and I won my first council run and my second. This is my fourth election in four years, so it's it's been uh, it's been pretty interesting. I'm sure. Now, does the Republican Party come to you and say, "Hey, is this a, a position you'd be interesting interested in looking at," or did you decide that you, this was something you wanted to do? Well, to be honest with you, the party approached me. So they had asked me to run for state rep uh, two years ago, which I did. And uh, that was quite a race, and I did not win. I wasn't successful. That was my only one that I did not win. But it was a very, very heavy Democrat uh, uh, area, just like this district is. But they asked me. They asked me, and they asked me right before the convention if I wanted to do this. And without any hesitation whatsoever, I said yes. So I stepped up to the plate, I started fundraising, and I've been out there canvassing, knocking on doors, granting interviews, uh, doing Facebook, social media, whatever I can to get my name out there. And it's, it's, been, it's been great. Um, like the congressman, I grew up in East Hartford and I was educated through the public schools there. And I live in West Hartford now, but I've also been uh, you know, taken to other cities like Boston, Dallas, and Philadelphia with my job. So why do you think that you could do a better job than Congressman John Larson? Look, everybody agrees that John's a nice guy, or Mr. Larson. That's what I call him, Mr. Larson. Um, Congressman Larson. He's 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 nothing bad to say about him personally whatsoever. I just think it's time for a change. He's been in that seat for 22 years, and Connecticut has been on the decline the whole entire time. And I think uh, we need to change direction very much so. And before that, he was 12 years in the state Senate. So I think he's had his run. And it's time for somebody else with different ideas, a different vision, and more positive energy for Connecticut to take, take over. So I'm ready to do that. Where are we lacking? What do you think that you could bring to the district? I mean, I know obviously your background is in financial services. You had talked mm -hmm. about that. Uh, we see Pratt and Whitney in your in this district here, in your East Hartford, laying off hundreds of people. What needs to happen? Why are we behind on, on the business front? Yeah. It's, it's really sad, actually. I mean, part of the reasons that I mentioned the towns that I uh, had to commute to for work, I've always kept my home in, in uh, Connecticut. I've never left the state. But I had to commute because there aren't any jobs here. So it's I personally had to, to deal with that. So I think there's a lot we can do with infrastructure. Look, law and order is extremely important, public safety. And backing our first responders, whether they're firemen or police officers or nurses on the front line, for that matter. I really don't like to see the direction we're going into after Sandy Hook. Uh, you know, the Democrat Party now wants to take police officers out of, out of the schools. I don't think that's wise. Um, you know, I do come from a law enforcement family, New York Police Department, and I just seen what they've had to give up in exchange to keep our community safe. And I don't think we should be penalizing them the way we are. And, um, you know, there hasn't been much of an outcry from Congress when 700 police officers have been ambushed, uh, either killed or, or critically injured since the violence started breaking out. Um, I, you know, we have to stop the riots. We have to stop the, um, you know, ripping off the stores and making these places into war zones. And we have to respect uh, other people's rights. And violence is not the way to do it. So I, I think we need changes there. The economy, my Lord, Connecticut has been a laggard. We have not uh, recovered since 2008. So that recession did a job on us and it still continues. My former employer, GE, left the state 
Aetna's on the verge. Um, UTC, you know, they're breaking up and they'll be located elsewhere. The layoffs are coming. And I just think we've got to reverse those trends as quickly as we can. So whether it's investing in, in um, our defense, we need to continue to do that. Um, we need to get our financial services back up and running. We're not the leader anymore. I know we keep saying we are, but believe me, that's my business. And they're in Des Moines and they're elsewhere in the country. They're not coming to Hartford. And we need to invest in technology. So I think, you know, those are things that I would be proposing. And there's there's enough money that we can get our fair share um, in Washington and bring it back to the state and start rebuilding. How do you do that? Is it just, you know, connections in Washington? I mean, how are you going to rally to bring money that you think that Congressman Larson mm -hmm. hasn't been able to? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I would certainly hope that I would get a good assignment. Uh, appropriations would be right up my alley. I know that's very uh, unusual for a freshman congresswoman to, to get that kind of an assignment, but you never know. Um, I think I'm very capable in that arena. And I know how to navigate large institutions. Jeez, GE, 300,000 people. And uh, I had to communicate with the top, 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 and to get things done and get my projects funded. So I've got a lot of experience with that. I bring my business savvy. Not that government is necessarily just like a business, but you know, you know how to squeeze dollars and you know how to allocate them to the proper places. And I, I just think right now we're, we're in a lock jam and we have not gotten the stimulus approved. And you look around and not only is it the big business, is like United Technologies, Pratt & Whitney. Well, look at the storefronts, look at the restaurants, look at all the smaller businesses. 60% of people work for small business and they're shuttered. And we need to help these folks get past that. And we don't need to laden bills with pork and unnecessary things other than just get people COVID relief. You so call, you let's call just you... stop it. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, 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 that's okay. I'm good. You call yourself more of a moderate Republican. Am I correct about that? Yes. I had read yes. that you had said that. Um, I'm just yeah, curious, absolutely. how would you interact with the president and what do you think, what grade would you give the president on the job that he's done so far in the last four years? Yeah, so being objective, um, you know, he's obviously a very uh, polarizing person, and uh, I think he's done a lot of good, though. I truly do. I think he's kept us safe. I think uh, before COVID hit, the economy was really doing very well. He was pro-business. We had the highest employment for everybody, um, whites, blacks, Hispanics, across the board. Everybody was doing better, and uh, I think he deserves points for that. Um, I wish he would sometimes take his phone and throw it in the Potomac, but uh, that's how he chooses to communicate. And I know it, it doesn't um, rub everybody the right way, but I, I think he's, he's doing the job. He's doing what he said he would. And that's, to me, very refreshing for a president. I would assume that means that you are going to probably vote for him and not Joe Biden, it sounds like. <sighs> Uh, yes, I, I will answer the question directly. I know a lot of people dodge it. Uh, look at what's just coming out on, on Vice President Biden and his son. We knew that all along, but now we're getting confirmation that there was a lot of corruption going on with Hunter Biden and his seats on the board of Burisma and some of his business dealings in China. It's 47 years he's been in there, and I, I don't think he's a great choice either. I actually think he's rather flawed. And if he couldn't figure out how to make government work in 47 years, why should we give him the top job and, and, and think that he'll do any differently? I just, there's too many issues with him as well. All right, on a more lighthearted note, we had talked to Congressman <laughs> Larson about this before. He uh, was your assistant basketball coach when you were in high school, I want to uh, ask you what your memories are of it and uh, how that interaction is in the race. It's, it's, it's interesting. It, it's very it's very interesting. And my sister, he, he, my sister Margie also played on the, on the team and my parents were at the games very often. And I also have a younger brother and sister. And uh, my mom taught in the, the East Hartford school system as well. And my father's first job out of UConn, interestingly, was at Pratt Whitney um, in the purchasing materials, you know, executive management program. But anyway, uh, he was, he was, he's, he's an athlete himself. He was a very good coach and he, he was the assistant coach, but he, he played a very, very active role in our practices. Miss Rogers was, um, the head coach and I have respect for both of them. He, um, he took it, he took it seriously. He ran us hard. He worked us hard. He had high standards. 
Uh, we had a lot of fun, though. I, 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 the teams that he and Miss Rogers produced were very good, and you know the whole picture, the students, the studies, um, as well as as the athletic performance. It was a class double L school, so we played you know a lot of the bigger high schools in, in the state, and uh, you know I probably bore the brunt of maybe running a little bit more, and I probably deserved it, but um, <laughs> I thought it was a very very good coach, and uh, I treated everybody you know fairly. All right. Well, Mary Fay, Republican running for Congress, we really appreciate you uh, coming on the program and talking with us this morning. And we uh, we can now say we have a little bit of history on the East Hartford basketball team from 40 years ago. So <laughs> always fun. Yeah. Thank you very much for your very time. Very good, good Jen. Thanks race. for having me on. You're welcome. Thanks for having me on. Okay. Well, that Take does care. it for The Real Story. If you want to watch these segments again, you can head to fox61.com or download the Fox 61 News app and watch The Real Story every Sunday at 10 a.m. right here on Fox 61. Have a great morning.